um, say a few things this morning different than normal, and I hope that you'll listen, give me your attention uh, today, and I'm going to show you something I believe would be a help to you, and preach for a few minutes on the bus ministry, why we have a bus ministry at our church. Well, the first thing you'll see when you drive up that hill out there is them buses sitting out there. Our church has a burden for kids, and therefore we have a bus ministry. Jesus in the Great Commission, Matthew 28, verse 19, verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. That's a commandment. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He spoke that to his apostles, but it definitely carries over because he said it was all the way to the end of the world. So it's a commandment to us. We call that the Great Commission. I want to preach for a few minutes this morning about the bus ministry. You may not realize this this morning. You that have been coming here for many years, you are in a exceptional church. Our church is unusual in that we have and still believe in the bus ministry. There's hundreds of churches that used to run buses that no longer do it. Just got out of it, quit altogether. Too much risk, too much expense, too much liability, too much uh, trouble, fussing, arguing, demon powers working. But we, by the help of the Lord, have been able to continue all these years. I personally have been in the bus ministry since 1982. I've seen buses come, buses go. I have seen multitudes of people's lives changed by and because of those buses. Thank God for our bus ministry. We are planning this weekend for the biggest day of the year, this coming weekend. We met with them last night, talked to everybody about it. They're setting goals. We have set a goal, the Lord willing, this Saturday, our church, to knock on 1,000 doors and leave literature, leave tracks, leave witnesses to 1,000 doors. Now, that ain't much compared to how many people there are in, in the world, but I'm telling you one thing, that's a lot for us, one church to do in one day. Thank God that we've got people that are willing to care about somebody else. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the biggest sins of our generation. The biggest sin of our generation for Christians is for all the people care about their self. And as long as they're happy and fed and got what they want, could not care less about the rest of the world. And we need to care about other people. You hear me? We need to care about other people. One more time with feeling. We need to care about other people. People need the Lord. Families need the Lord. Kids need the Lord. Everybody you meet and know needs the Lord. I'm going to show you something here. Uh, Ron, I might need you to help me back there in a minute with the lights. And I'm going to show you something this morning that I believe that God would use to speak to our hearts. We had uh, this time last year, um, our bus workers went out and did a fine job, as always. And I got to thinking about that. And I got to thinking about uh, how God has used the bus ministry in, in my life. And I see people all over this church that he's done the same thing for. So this morning, in uh, just a minute, I want to make sure I can get a picture first. Uh, you can go ahead and get these, get these up here, Ron. Make sure we got volume. And let's remind ourselves of what we were doing this time last year. For you that have not been here before or maybe haven't been coming real long, uh, I want you uh, to... Get this, and you'll see just a little bit about what the bus ministry is, okay? Go ahead and get them all. This one right above my head, the far right over there. Far right. 
Way over here. I got them too.
something you wouldn't believe you would not believe where some just our bus kids come from you saw one kid up here you might not have noticed it or you might not know which one it was but there are 15 kids in two single wide trailers two single wide put together that's a lot of kids in one, one two single wides together and that's only the beginning. And you know what? My heart is, is really broke this morning. Burdened for them kids. I mean, them little kids, them belong to some. The Lord loves them kids as much as he loves your kids or my kids or me or you. And I don't know what to do except y'all just give him my... My burden last night about 12 o'clock or 11.30, I wrote down two or three things and I just wanted to read them to you tonight. I'm not even, this morning, I'm not even going to preach like I normally do because I believe that we are in a, a place right now that we can do something. We can reach some boys and girls for the Lord. But you've got to care. You've got to care. You can't just care about yourself and your wants and your belly and your sleep, and your rest, and your uh, time, and your leisure, and your fishing, or your hunting. There's nothing wrong with none of that stuff. It all can be good. But you've got to care for more than that. You've got to care. And I want to say just a few things about our bus ministry this morning. And the first thing I want to say is the bus ministry is the greatest outreach of the church in America. I don't know of any other ministry that reaches more people and families in America than the bus ministry. I can you know one, let me know. I know churches go soul winning. I believe in that. And that's that is the bus ministry, soul winning. But I don't know of anything any that gets more people to church and to the Lord as an outreach than the bus ministry. Now I'll tell you why the reason churches don't have bus ministries. Uh, number one, it's very expensive. It's, it's very aggravating. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, hard work. People say, uh, people ask me all the time, they say, how do you get people to do that? And I said, well, the, the main way to get people to do something is do it yourself. A preacher won't do nothing. The people won't do nothing. Ain't that right? If a preacher expect, if I expect you to do it, I ought to do it. I get sick and tired of preachers telling everybody how they should do, and they don't do nothing. So y'all can say amen, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's the truth. I heard a preacher one time say, well, I, when I go to a church, I ask them, do they want my, my uh, heart or my feet? If they're going to want me out visiting all the time, I'm not going to study. And if they're going to want me to preach good, I'm not going to visit. And the, the truth is, a church deserves your heart and your feet and your head and your ears and your eyes. Everything a preacher has, the church deserves to have that. I ought to give everything I've got and everything I am for the ministry of Shining Light Baptist Church. And a preacher won't do that. I've had people tell me, they say, boy, I'd like to get a bus ministry started in my church. You can forget it if a preacher ain't for it. He, he's got to be the man that pushes it. Have to be. If he don't, you are wasting your time and money. 
So I want to say secondly, the bus ministry puts the great commission into practice that I read to you a, a while ago. The bus ministry puts that into practice. Here's the Lord. He said, go ye out in the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Down every little old road. You know, you'd be surprised at the little old roads that go down off of little old roads that go down off of little old roads uh, uh, around this part of the country. It ain't like that in the city where it's flat and all squares or Florida or out west or somewhere. Around here, you think, you, you think well, there ain't nobody lives up there. You might be surprised. You drive up a road and go over a hill and there's 35 trailers uh, uh, down a hill like that. Or a house over here and there's another one up yonder and there's another one up yonder. Oh, Lord, we went over yonder yesterday. Lord, in mercy. Right that there at the, cook, the, the famous cook. Right your hand back there, Miss Sand. Lord, you ought to go there, y'all. That's something to see. American pickers went over there. Uh, I, I, they did, really. And uh, I'm telling you what is unreal. But you, you know, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. Keep going, and there's kids everywhere. I was uh, we were playing ball the other morning at the gym, and we got through. We, get, we play at six o'clock in the morning, and I get through at seven fifteen. So I got the whole day ahead to do whatever. And I I come through Morgan, stopped over yonder store, and got me a Gatorade. And I saw eight or nine kids here, eight or nine kids there, standing out waiting on the school bus. And I thought, good Lord, what a bus ministry. The public school bus ministry, gets on, it ain't even daylight yet. And, and hundreds and hundreds of kids get on. Isn't that something? Lord have mercy, wouldn't it be something if God's church and God's people put forth an effort like that to get boys and girls to church? Number three, number three, the bus ministry Listen to me. The bus ministry gives laymen. Laymen, that's a, that's a ministerial term. Preachers say that means uh, the p- people that sitting in the pews, you. Uh, not clergy, not preachers, not pastors, not the average church member. It, you know, you may think, I just come to church. I don't have any talent. I can't play a guitar. I can't sing. I don't even sing the choir. What can I? The, the bus ministry gives the average layman an opportunity to serve the Lord. Uh, uh, husbands, wives. That's, I, I can't think of a greater opportunity. Every once in a while, uh, somebody comes and they'll say, uh, uh, what does your church have to offer? That's our mentality today. Our mentality today is not can I come and help, can I come and get in here and roll up my sleeves and do something for God. What does your church offer for us? Um, uh, we offer getting the devil preached out of you twice a week. You like that? Uh, and, we, and, and we offer the opportunity to go witness, amen, and fast and pray. They don't like that too good. Uh, but I'm telling you something, brother. Uh, the, the, the bus ministry gives the average woman, the average child, the average, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, kids are some of the most effective bus workers you can possibly have. Listen, Anthony's dog goes, don't you see? He, he was sick yesterday, but if he can go, if I can go when I'm sick, his dog can go when he's sick. And they take him on bus route. He's a little old black mutt dog, about that big. And they take him on bus route every Saturday, and kids love it. And that dog ain't even going to heaven. He's going to dog hell. Uh, and and uh, he, no, he don't go to neither one. He just dies, and that's the end of it. Uh, but anyway, he, he, uh, he takes that dog out on bus route, and the Lord uses that dog. These deacons, come up here, you two deacons right here. See these two deacons right here? Come up here. These two right here, they went out on bus route yesterday. And I heard, I heard that somebody was talking bad about it. They said somebody, they knocked on this one door and they said, we're from Shining Light Baptist Church. And some woman said, Danny Castle, bam, slammed the door in her face. Hallelujah, what a blessing. That's good. Amen. Every time somebody says something bad about me, the Lord just puts blessings on me. I'll take it. Amen. I mean, woe unto the preacher that everybody speaks well of. That's right. So these deacons, you you take up for me? Did you hit her in the mouth? No, I didn't not do that. Uh, But Oh, you didn't go to that house. I'm glad. They went to another and where somebody said a bad something bad. But anyway, these deacons were out there and heard and the talking the gospel and giving out tracts. Okay, y'all can sit down. You know what? We had a bunch of teenagers show up Saturday. We were sending them to the flea market like we did for the youth rally and take these camp meeting signs right here and say, guess what? 
There's an old-fashioned camp meeting going on in Morganton. You say, well, I wouldn't, you ain't ashamed of it, are you? I'm telling you, buddy, listen, if them weirdos can get out there in front of the Capitol with purple hair and baby diaper pins stuck through their nose and beating on things and, and act a fool like they are, listen, we're sitting here. We've got what the world really needs. We've got what they're really looking for. We've got what really makes a difference in somebody. Glory to God, people. It'd be a sin to keep it in these four walls. We've got something so good in here. The whole blessed world needs to hear it and be a part of it. And the bus ministry will give you a chance to do that. Number four, the bus ministry fulfills Jesus' words of suffer the little children to come unto me. Bring little children. That's a fulfillment. Bring up a child. Listen, my mom, when I was little, put me and my two sisters. I remember sitting on her lap, and you know, everybody, you want to sit on your mom, you know, you feel her hair. We used to feel that fat part right here under her arm. You know, kids just love just to feel that. I don't know why. It's, that's gross. I can't stand to think about that now. But when you're little, uh, you do that, and uh, you know, that fly out right there. And I, I remember sitting there like that, and Mom would open that big old family Bible, and she'd tell us Bible stories, and she'd read us the Bible. And I grew up knowing that the Bible was the Word of God. Well, guess what, people? Guess what? There's thousands of kids that don't have my mama. They don't know what it's like to be told a Bible story. That's why we have a Sunday school teacher waiting on them when they come in here on Sunday morning to open the Word of God and say, guess what? There's a God in heaven that loves you. He cares about you. He died for you. Hallelujah. He'll save you. You can go to heaven when you die. That's the best news them kids have ever heard. Amen. Amen. You believe that, don't you? I do. Amen. Suffer the little children to come. The Bible said train up a child in the way he should go when he's old not to part. How, how do they get trained up if nobody ever teaches them the Bible? They don't get it at home. They went to a home yesterday. They give out Bibles, and they went to a home yesterday. Was it child did that? Tried to give somebody a Bible, and the woman wouldn't let him? That was, was it Kelly? Where's she at? She's back in junior church. They tried to give a, a woman, these kids, a Bible, and the mama said, No! and wouldn't let her kids have a Bible yesterday. Yesterday. That's the kind of people we're dealing with. There are people, listen, our society is turning atheistic. Our society is turning pagan, brother. It ain't like it was 30 years ago. The society me and you live in is turning against the Bible, against old faith. That's why some of you dead in four o'clock this morning. The world's had you all week long. I'm gonna slap my hands and raise them up and say God is still on his throne. He don't even feel bad. Thank God he's still alive. Thank God he's still real. Thank God he's coming back again. Thank God we're still going home and we ought to grab up every little old boy and girl we can find and take them with us. That's right. That's right. Number five, the bus ministry continually brings new faces to church. Continually. Now the truth is, a lot of churches are only interested in one class of people and that class is from 20 to 40 soccer mom with a nice van and pretty little kids and make good money now them people need the Lord ain't no doubt about it but not many people care about poor people and not many people care about little kids that maybe don't smell too good or don't have good hygiene not many people care about uh, a little kid, listen, listen, y'all. It continually brings new faces. Listen, there's people sitting in here this morning. You're talented, you're smart, you can talk. And you lay around all day on Saturday and won't hit a lick at a snake. I don't understand how come we couldn't care about somebody else. God cared about us. God cared about us. He cared about me and he sent somebody to tell me. He can send us to tell somebody else. Number six, the bus ministry is a great means of reaching families. Not just kids, families. Families. You know what we've had over and 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 over? Somebody will come and they'll walk, walk in that door 
Never been here before. We don't know them. They don't know us. Like this young man right here. First time you've been here, ain't hey, brother? Come on the bus this morning. Amen. I thought Willie Nelson come in when I seen him. No, I just kidding. And and uh, I never met this guy a while ago. But you have somebody walk in like that once in a while, and they'll say, I'll say, Hey, how are you? What's your name? She said, So you're the preacher, huh? That's all I've heard. They preached to me, told me I was going to hell, and told me I need to come to church. Man, that's the way to reach families. Amen. Them little kids get off that bus. Guess what, mama? You and daddy better get saved. I mean, and, and they'll do more preaching to them than me and you'll ever get to. It's happened. I mean, they'll crawl up in daddy's lap and they'll say, what do you want for your birthday, daddy? I want you to go to church with me. Yes, sir, buddy. Oh, man, it takes a mean man to say no to that. That little girl crawling up in your lap and begging you to go to church, you, you're a mean man if you can say no to that. But it, it reaches families. It reaches families. Uh, they, have, they preach to mom. They go home singing them songs. They go home singing them songs. Uh, uh, they go on the wheels of the bus, go round, round, round. Uh, you know, they, they, they go home singing them song, deep and wide, deep and wide. What are you singing, honey? Deep, I don't know, deep and wide, uh, whatever it is. I don't even know what, I, I don't even know if I know what all that is. Uh, but I know they sing them, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Uh, they go home, they go home singing, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. They go home singing that. And you know, that gets stuck in people's head. That's a witness. Them bus kids go home singing that. They preach to mom. They preach to dad. Some, I've seen some of them, I've seen some of them come in here with a tie on and say, I want to be like a preacher. I want to be like my Sunday school teacher. They're impressionable. Kids, you can make an impression on them real easy and real quick. And brother, ladies and gentlemen, it, it, get them while they're young. That's why the devil's after kids. And by the way, I'm not preaching on this this morning, but you already know it. There's never been a time in our history when kids are being abused mentally, sexually, physically. Good night, it's unbelievable. The statistics are, are make you sick. I'll tell you this, statistically, there's a bunch of them here today that's being abused. Today. Today. A girl called me in my office one day. She said, Preacher, can I talk to you? And I said, yes, ma'am. She, she's, I think she's 14. She's real timid, real shy, and with tears coming down her face, she said, my uncle, and long story short, her uncle's abusing her. After her daddy passes out at night, mama worked third shift. And she finally got out of that mess, got it straightened out. That'll scar that kid the rest of its life. I'm telling you people, it would turn your stomach. These big trucks going down the road now out here, you don't even know what's in some of them nowadays. Like cattle, like chickens. They, they're catching them all the time for sale, just like, like animals. Won't you please come and get me, Mr. Busman? I think there's some of our kids every Saturday. They've told me. Uh, we we see them and say, where's so-and-so? Where's my bus captain? They didn't come today. Where are they at? And they look for you. You know why? Because you are the only link they've got to something that's bright and real and gives them hope. They know there ain't no hope in MTV. They know there ain't no hope in Hollywood movies. They know there ain't no hope in some demonic, Halloween, ungodly, uh, demon-possessed movies and stuff like that. They, but when they hear about Jesus, they know it's light. They feel it. It's a different atmosphere. It's a different spirit. They say, there's something different about that. I want it. I like it. And God will speak to their heart and families can be saved. Before I say my last point, how many people in this room today are here because of the bus ministry. I want you to stand, please. If you're here because of the bus ministry, stand up. Look at that. That ain't counting the mob back yonder in the junior church. The mob is back yonder. 
You can be seated. Number seven, I'm done. The bus ministry, this is the most important thing I'll say, can be used by God to keep somebody out of hell. Out of hell. Listen, there's, we can give them candy and have a good time with them, and I, and I firmly believe in that. Anybody that's against giving kids a piece of candy or is wicked. I don't mean you health people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about doing, give them organic candy, sugarless. What in the name of the Lord is that? What Sugarless candy sounds like that's hey, a good devil. Ain't no, there's no such thing. Listen, the bus ministry. The bus ministry, y'all. The buses can and have been used by God to get somebody. If somebody gets saved, they're not going to hell when they die and leave this world. In this Bible, over 50 times it warns you there's a hell. There's a hell where people go and burn forever who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And those buses pulling up in front of them houses, letting them in here, hear the gospel, can change their life and send them to heaven when they leave us. Listen, there ain't nothing no more important than that. You know something more important than that? Tell me about it. We're talking about eternity forever and ever and ever and ever. This Saturday, we're going to pray all week. And I know people have to work on Saturday. Some people are physically not able to get out and run all. I know that. I ain't stupid. This Saturday, for anybody that wants to, we're going to go find a bunch more kids. And we're going to bring them to church Sunday if it's God's will and he gives us good weather and everything. You see, you know what I could do? I could stay home and feel sorry for myself and say, poor little me, other preachers won't give me a chance and poor me. But I ain't going to sit around and whine about what I ain't got. I ain't going to do that. I know what I can do and I know what God gave me to do. And I'm not going to use my, my, what I can't do as an excuse to keep doing what I can do. I could sit around the rest of my life and say, poor little me, I'm pitiful. Or I can get out here and beat the bushes all day and I can stand up here next Sunday morning and see people walk through that door and see them in this altar and get saved. Amen. I want to use my life so that when I come down to the end, I can look back and say, Lord, I tried to help people get saved and stay out of hell. I tried. You know what I've asked God to do? I've asked God to speak to your heart this morning. You, you, you might just want to give financially. We got one, had transmission go out on one last Sunday. Last Sunday. Had 31 kids on it sitting on in the road. And the, and the cops came. Oh, they, got, and they had 31 kids on a bus. And, they, and there ain't nothing you can do. Transmission goes out. Bill was uh, doing all he could. And Vicky was, and she called me. And, and uh, was going to send Anthony over there to get them. And the, and the cops came. And the cops said, this is too dangerous. Can't leave these kids out here. So they called the fire department and they brought vans. Those kids got a police escort home. They'll never forget that. Cool. Free ride in a cop car. We appreciate the uh, Lenore cops and, and fire department taking our kids home for us. Lord might bless them for that. They should start a bus ministry. While they're out sitting around out there not doing nothing. Years ago, Jack Hiles and them, they said one of them big churches had one of them big bus ministries. They was going to plan a thing on, on, on uh, Sunday morning and it was going to be the, pro, uh, the, what do you call that guy? Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan. And they had this guy and he was all, they, they laid him on the side of the road and he had ketchup all over him like he's bloody and got beat up and everything, rags. And he's laying on the side of the road and the, they was telling the story of the Good Samaritan and helping people. So the bus was going to pull up there and they said, oh, there's a man all beat up, fell among thieves. Let's rescue him. And they was going to let him. So he's laying out there with blood all over him like this, you know, ketchup, stuff all over his shirt and waiting on the bus to come by. And the cops came by first and got him. 
took him in. I mean, can you imagine telling him, look, I'm, I'm waiting on the church bus. Sure you are. That's the best story you can think of. <laughs> waiting on a church bus, laying in the ditch, drunk. No, you're not. Listen, the bus ministry can be used by God to keep somebody out of hell. You know what we need seriously in our church? Bus drivers. I'm asking God to put it on some of you men's heart. We short one this morning. Travis bailed us out. He bails us out. Brother Mike bails us out. Todd bailed us out like a week or two ago. Others bail us out. We need some bus drivers. Men, just go take that test and say, I'll drive occasionally. Everybody can help in the bus ministry. I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for them. Can we help and do something for them? Can we help next Sunday and bring them some cupcakes or something? And Crystal always lets them have a cake walk out there, and they love stuff like that. You'd be surprised what a cupcake means to a five-year-old that don't get it all week long like some kids do. You'd be surprised. That's all I got on my heart. I want you to stand by your head. Miss Desi's going to come. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I'm just going to ask for help. I'm going to ask people to pray. God will give us a burden. She's playing, just come on, get in this altar this morning. Let's pray for our bus kids. Let's pray for our camp meeting. Let's pray for our big day next week. Let's pray for souls to be saved. Let's pray for the Holy Ghost to get in here. We're going to have a mob of kids here next Sunday. Anybody else? Come on, come on. Get down here on your knees. Say, Lord, I, I want to help. I'll, I'll do what I can. Amen, amen. 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 He so said, I got kids. Kelly's got kids. She's out there all day yesterday. He so said, I got work to be done. I got work to be done. So I'm busy. I'm busy. How about it? How about it? You let God speak to your heart. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of God, I pray you'd come down on this church this morning and bless it in a mighty and powerful way. Oh God, I pray that you'd bless us as we get ready to go to work this week. May the Holy Ghost bless next week on our big day. God, may souls be saved. Bless the camp meeting. Fill this place full of people and full of power and full of praise for the glory of God. Dear Lord Jesus, do what ought to be done in our lives. Help us, God, we pray. Bless our buses. Keep them safe. Fill them full. And use them for your glory. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. We're still praying this morning. We're still praying this morning. We're still praying. Hope God's put a burden on your heart for the bus. If you don't do nothing, let's pray. Maybe you should say, I'm going to take 10, 15 minutes every day. Because I don't get to get out much. Or maybe you're elderly and don't, and you can't get out or don't get out. And just pray 10 minutes every night before you go to bed. Pray God will protect them. Don't let them get, have a wreck or something. That'd be awful. The Lord's protected us all these years. And there's been some close calls. Amen. Just pray. Be a prayer warrior. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Now, I was going to have all of our bus workers come up here and stand, but uh, you know, I don't think they're, all, they're not all in here this morning. They're back there working with kids. Uh, some of them leave at uh, 7.30 every Sunday morning and get home about 2, two to 2.30 every Sunday. And next Sunday, it'll be 7.30 to about uh, probably 3.30 or 4. So appreciate our bus workers. Appreciate our bus workers. Tell them you appreciate them. I appreciate them. I told them last night, man, I appreciate y'all. I can push it, and I can push it, and I can push it, and I can raise money, and I can help pay for it, and I can do all I can, and I can pray the power down, but I can't do it all by myself. Uh, but with, there's enough of us here to there's enough of us here to get it done, people. There's enough of us here to get it done. And the happiest you'll ever be in your life is when you're doing something for other people in your heart. I'm not, I'm not just saying that to sound religious. It's a truth. It's a truth. It's the truth. I went to a nice restaurant before and we went to Gatlinburg and wound up in a big fuss and miserable and everybody mad at each other. 
and spent money and I was mad because I spent the money. And I went on bus route and sweat all day and hot sun and everything and come home and I felt like a million bucks and about shot it all evening. It's funny how that works, isn't it? It's funny how that works. Do something for somebody else. Lord bless you for it. Determine in your heart you're going to do something for somebody else. Invite somebody to come with you next Sunday morning. I'm going to have a special message ready for next Sunday. And we're going to hit it hard, hit it hard here in the next few weeks. The Tab family will be with us on the 28th, so you don't want to miss that. And uh, all these special days coming up, all right? Okay, now, this evening, 5.30.